What's up, Grandad? Uh, I was just preparing for our War of the Ring video well, review. I've got some news for you. Is it that you're going to help me pick that up? No. It's um... Because this is going to be a great review. I've got thoughts on this ancient design. No, it isn't. There's a new fantasy game in town. Bargain Quest. Bargain Quest is a delightfully sized box from Jonathan Yink, a designer who previously worked on Imperial Assault, which I had a space whale of a time with, as you can watch in my review. This is a game in which adventurers must save a town from the terrors of a mass of monsters, except you aren't actually playing as the heroes, you're managing the item shops that they'll be visiting before they go off to biff the big nasties. They say, a huge dragon is coming to town. And you say, oh, that's awful. Listen, it's dangerous to go alone. Would you like some nunchucks? Or, or maybe a bottle of wine? Oh, sir, can't afford our more luxury elixir. Not to worry, we do have some options for the more budget-conscious shopper. This unscrupulous humour is able to elevate what might otherwise be a trite, traditional premise for the game. Because the thing is, keep it down, but you are actually trying to save the town. You just might in the process of making lots of money. This box is further elevated by some art that's excellently diverse, yeah, but also just packed with heart and personality in general. But as good as the heroes and the monsters are, my personal favorite is that this game starts with a question that's way more interesting than what color do you want to be? It's what shop do you want to run? So all your friends are going to pick the shop that calls to them and then you get to tell them to open up shop. And so the first tiny decision that your friends make is rewarded with a big reveal. It's charming. I was charmed. And I was excited to learn how to play. So in every round of Bargain Quest, everyone is gonna be dealt four magical items off of this giant deck of stuff, and you're going to draft them. And what that means is you're going to pick one magic item that you wanna sell in your shop, and then you're going to pass the rest on in a clockwise formation. And if you've not played a drafting game before, let me be the first to tell you, there's a kind of magic to this. It's like, you're giving stuff to people. Even if it's garbage, that just feels nice. It's like Ring Around the Rosie, if you've ever played that great game. Pocket full of poses, a tissue, a tissue. A tissue. Well, wait, what's this got to do with, uh, with drafting? drafting mechanics? Oh, well, we're going around. That yeah, seems pretty Don't tiny. ruin this for me. It's like, it's got a nice vibe. You go around. Okay. It's drafting. Okay. All right, we're going to do, put your effort yeah, into it, yeah? Ring, ring, a ring, a roses, a pocket full of... Your heart's not in it anymore. Okay. I don't know what you want. Now, on each round, there's going to be a different monster on the outskirts of town, but also a selection of different heroes are going to come to town. And different heroes all want different things and have different amounts of money. None of those cards you've drafted, you're going to pick one magic item, ooh, a fine cloak, to put in the window of your shop. And if you put the nicest item out, you're going to have the first pick of heroes. Ooh, come, come, bard, into the realm of retail. You're then gonna sell this hero as much stuff as you are legally able and then send them off to face victory or death. If they manage to wound that monster, you get a victory point. If they survive, you get another victory point. But if they fail and get eaten by a witch, don't be sad, because you'll always have the memory of the lovely money they left behind. Those cards you couldn't sell or your window display, you can then choose one thing to keep for the next round. A new boss appears if you defeated the old one, some new heroes roll into town, hopefully not asking questions about what happened to the old ones, and you're gonna go again. But excitingly, between rounds, you can hire staff for your shop that provide one-off tricks or permanent bonuses, and you can upgrade your shop to hold more stuff in storage or fill out that window display. And each hero has their own little quirk, like the young hero, who's not very good to begin with, but has potential, which means all of the bonuses of items you give them are doubled. Or my personal favorite, the witch hunter. Ah, uh, the witch hunters come into your shop. That's great news. They've got quite a lot of money. They're quite powerful, but you will have to immediately put in the bin any magical items in your shop. No, nothing in here, nothing. This cup, no, it's not magical. It's just, oh, you didn't see that. Look at these normal swords. As with most great games, it's the pairing of mechanic and theme that makes 
bargain quest pop into life. It's the fact that you can sell people really expensive junk that does nothing. And there's even a hero who is rubbish, but will buy anything and he's really rich. Excuse me, sir. Hello. I'm looking for a board game for two to four players and I shan't be put off by high prices. Oh, I believe I have, may I have just... Have you ever played the game Doritos Cool Original? Can't say that I have. It's a board game for two to four players? Yes, I want it. How much is it? 100. 100? Just... And 50. And 50. Okay. 100. 50, 100. Do you take gold bullion? Yes. Clarence, back up the car! Up to this point, it's a straight numbers game. Have you given the hero the right stuff to fight the boss? But there is a slight randomness, because when they go and actually stand up to them, you find out something about that hero. It might make them slightly better or slightly worse. Maybe the young hero is nervous, not as effective as you might have hoped, or maybe the paladin is forgetful and you just sold them a sword and a shield, but then they forgot to take their shield, which is hilarious, even though maybe that paladin is now dead. Or maybe the nobleman, everyone laughed at him, everyone thought he was useless, but it turns out he's awesome. Seems that silly fellow took me for a ride. But in the course of trying to reverse engineer this bag of snacks, I have developed a rather terrific abstract game. Clarence, set up meetings with Vlada, Ian O'Toole, and the head of Asmodee. I shall take the seaplane. A few years ago, when I was but a floofy baby, I was introduced to the Shut Up and Sit Down extended universe via a series called The Opener, in which I tried to hunt down the very best gateway games, enticing people into the world of games like a bad witch in a big forest. And this might be my new favourite gateway game. It's a little too complex for players who are absolute beginners, but the sweet art, the great comedy and the literal simple theme, you're running a shop, makes it so much easier to coax people in to really getting into it and understanding it and having a lot of fun. It's easy to forget that even something as simple as drafting can be alien to those new to the hobby, as can the concept of victory points, an often secondary economy that exists largely outside the game but is also constantly at the core of it. So much of what board gamers take for granted and appreciate the richness of can seem ridiculous and frivolous to outsiders. It's why that Parks and Recreation Cones of Dunshire sketch is so funny, because we all know it comes from a place of real truth. Maybe the most important mechanic in Bargain Quest is so beautifully boring. Whenever you're doing something in the game, you can easily work out how many points that's going to get you. Because victory points are just like one victory point, two, three, and at the end of the game, money, for every 10 coins you have, that's worth a victory point, which means calculations at any point, easy, immediate. And keeping the calculations here simple is vital because it means that less experienced players don't give up when they're trying to strategize. Because unless you've ever experienced the thrill of how good it feels to hatch a plan and have it all come off beautifully, how are you supposed to appreciate why it's worth your time and energy to do that? The thing is, I've got friends who I play a lot of board games with, but they don't get into economic games because they try and work out what the best thing to do is and what the best ratio of points are, and they can't, and they just disengage. They just think, whatever, doesn't really matter. And when I played Bargain Quest with those guys, that didn't happen. They could always work out, that's worth two points, that's worth three. And it meant that these people activated. They became focused, engaged. They were taking a while to make out the decision on a turn, but it wasn't because they were confused and fed up. It was because they were focused, fixated, excited. And for me, having that, having a gateway game that isn't just saying, hey look, board games can be fun and not bad and not boring. Having a game that can be like, this might be the most exciting and fun, engaging thing you do all week. That's brilliant. The drafting is simple, the maths is simple, the decisions are simple, but there is enough crunch within this little box to give people a really good flavor of just how great board games can be. And if you're someone like me who plays a ton of board games, it's still fun and it's really fun to see people less experienced really getting into something in the way that you will with anything because you're a monstrous beast. There's also a ton of humor in this box. And for a tiny box like this, it's 
a modern classic in my collection for what it is and what it does. I love it. And it's an easy recommendation from Shut Up and Sit Down. As with Tim Fowers' stuff, it's only available directly from the creator's website, which is great in terms of supporting people who make cool things and not so great in terms of shipping costs. So if you do live outside of the US, then your value for money will vary. Yeah, I just want to add that in terms of Shut Up and Sit Down recommended drafting games, I personally think that you should buy Sushi Go Party first, which is a little cheaper and... I think I prefer it. Both amazing games. But here's another thing. A card game called Boss Monster has sold tens of thousands of copies recently and it plays on geek tropes. And we have played Boss Monster here at Shut Up and Sit Down, but we've never talked about it because we don't think it's worth your money. Now, what I will say is that Bargain Quest is absolutely the geeky trope game that I would buy first and that I would recommend. I mean, I generally prefer more crunchy stuff, heavier stuff. Quinn, in my collection. stop. The universe doesn't revolve around you, even though in repeated examinations it appears to in manners which the scientific community are confounded by. Well, I mean, I am editing this video. So within the digital fiction that we created, the world could revolve around me. What? I mean, if you watch this... Are you Quinn Smith? Yeah. Um, Hooray! Hey, do you want to go play some cool board Absolutely. games? Absolutely! Let's go! Well, thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, we've got loads! Shut Up and Sit Down is on a quest to bring you the best board game reviews on the internet! Because board games are amazing. Now, if you'll excuse me... Mm.